the airspace, whatever airspace that's going to be today. I like the stash. <laughs> you like good. that? It <laughs> looks good. I told you. <laughs> so I'm going to do something. I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it looks good, but uh, I, I appreciate the vote of confidence. All right. Yeah, so these little buckles, the hooks that have the leg strings, you just want them facing towards the seat. Okay. Uh, just so that way, whenever it does activate, if they do, it just goes straight towards the seat. So next up is going to be two again, so that's going to be your SSK straps. Okay. So these sometimes can be a little weird since this harness isn't fitted specifically towards you. All right, so the last thing is going to be two again, so this is going to be for your releases. Okay. So usually these kind of hang on these little hooks right here, but you want to grab these and simultaneously pull them down, and then you want to connect into your harness right That's here. what connects your parachute, so that's the one you really want. Yeah, it's an important one. Oh yeah, really important. <laughs> yeah, so getting out is basically just everything in reverse. All right, pull them right And if you stand up now, you should be good to go. Awesome. There you go. That's how we do it. What's right. this thing called again? Bernie chair. All right, so you feel like, which way do you feel like you're going? Uh, that way. Okay. Where do you feel like you're going now? This way. You feel like you're going left? I do, left. Yep. You were stationary. What's that? <laughs> you weren't moving at all. <laughs> all right. Okay, which way are you going? Left. Look up. <laughs> wow. Everything is based off of your inner ear, right. and it is meant for like hunting and gathering and stuff like that. It's not meant for like flying upside down and pulling G's. It's an amazing system, but it's not very good when it comes to like spinning or it comes to G forces and stuff like that. And so that, that is what we call spatial disorientation, where you feel like you're doing one thing, but in reality you're doing something else. And so the point of that is to teach students that when you have instruments, you have to trust those instruments. Even if your brain is telling you that you're doing something incorrect, you have to re-cage yourself on whatever those instruments are uh, because you can't trust your inner ear. It's just not designed for that. And that's the whole point of that. Yeah, so everyone gets it wrong. Okay, good. <laughs> Don't feel bad. <laughs> so this is the operations group for the Injet program. Uh, Injet is, uh, it's a bit of a, hand, a handful of a name. It stands for Euro NATO Joint Jet Pilot Training. Injet. So this is the Injet program. It consists of 14 different nations. Uh, that all come together and and run the best, most competitive pilot training in the world. So we will take students uh, from all 14 of these countries that you see uh, around here. They'll come to this program. Uh, we'll have instructors from those countries that are instructing, uh, and we'll teach them. We'll take them from not knowing what an airplane is to being able to dogfight and drop bombs wow. all in the course of about 12 to 13 months. Wow! Really, from soup to nuts, all the way. Wow! That's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. So uh, the ops group consists of six, essentially six squadrons. Uh, so we have two T-38 squadrons. So we have the 469th mm -hmm. and the 90th are two T-38 squadrons. Our T-6 squadrons are the 459th and the 89th over there. Uh, so we have a little history there. And then the 88th, that is your IFI. Which is you. So we have the T-6s, so they'll go T-6s, then they'll go T-38s, and then if they are good enough and they get a fighter pilot slot, so when they, it's all a meritocracy, so based off how well you did in the class, the top guy gets to his dream sheet, they go in, they see what they have available, and the top thing that they have available, that's top of his list, he gets, and then they go to the next person, he or she gets, and they move on to the next person. And that changes depending on what, obviously, every class and what the Air Force needs. There may be exactly. a fixed number of slots for F-35s. For, for, for F-35s, for F-15s, or, B-52s or B-1s if they're going to bomber aircraft. Then they have to come learn the basics. They already know how to fly a T-38. They know how to fly low level. They know how to fly formation. They know how to fly instruments. Uh, they know how to fly you know, all, all these different aerobatics. Uh, now they have to learn how to dogfight. Right. Now they have to learn how to drop bombs. Over here we have the 80th OSS. So the OSS is the Operation Support Squadron. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're kind of the group of everybody that is needed to help make sure that these airplanes can fly. They're the people that are there making sure that this operation goes. And so I feel like sometimes they're kind of the unsung heroes because right. you know, the, the, the airplanes get a lot of attention, but they really do a lot of work right. to make sure that this runs well. All of these squadrons come together underneath the 80th Operations Group, uh, which the group then reports to the wing, the 80th Operations Wing, uh, and this is the group building. Wow, and how big is the wing overall in terms of 
As far as people? people my guess would be somewhere around 2,000 to 3,000 people. Wow, what an operation. It, it's really cool. What I, one of the things I really love about it, one, we train more fighter pilots here than, than anywhere else right. as far as in the United States Air Force. Uh, we put through half this one base, despite the fact that there's a lot of bases across the country uh, in, our, in our fighter fundamentals, we put through over half of all fighter pilots. That the Air Force produces comes from, from this, staff. Just this unit. Wow! Um, and the other really cool thing is, with you see these flags around here, um, we're not an American-only unit, right? We are we are truly a NATO unit, and so uh, in that regard, you can be flying. Say you're flying a four ship, so there's four aircraft going up to go fly. The number one aircraft he's leading, he's a German instructor, right? And the number two aircraft you're teaching, you got a Norwegian student and a Spanish uh, instructor behind him. And the number three aircraft, maybe you have an American leading that. And that's normal, right? right? That's not a weird thing for us. That's just kind of how we operate. Right. Uh, and it's, it's pretty incredible. It doesn't happen anywhere else. Well, it was amazing early in one of the uh, training sessions, just looking around the room right. and seeing individuals who had patches from, you know, they're flying with the Luftwaffe, they're Turkish, uh, right. Canadian. Like you just, you see that representation spread pretty heavily throughout you know, the entire student base. Well, and the the foundations and relationships that are established here carry on, right? So when I was in when I was stationed in the Middle East, I saw people that I knew from this organization that were in different countries that were in the same location, and so we immediately had a bond, we immediately had a connection, and we also knew that we all had the same baseline, we all had the same foundation, right? right? And so there was a lot of value in that when it comes to joint interoperability. Wow, well, it's been an amazing day. I can't thank you enough for uh, making this happen. Tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be even more fun. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. <laughs> this is a new innovation that we have in here. Uh, we want to create a system that people can come, practice students can come in and practice uh, in a system that's a higher fidelity than what I had when I was going through. So when I was going through, we had a piece of paper that you would put up and you'd have a little stick and you sit in the chair and you'd look at the flight control instruments that's from a piece of paper and you'd imagine going through things, we call it chair flying. Uh, and so we wanted to use technology to come up with a little bit more advanced system. So let's go check it out. I'll let you be offensive. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so you can try to you can try to shoot me. All right, I'm in the matrix. That's cool. All right, Grant. So here's the game plan. You're directly behind me, so I'm gonna come off pause, okay. and you're gonna see me start to run away. From Let's you. do it. All right, fight on. Slippery little devil. Yeah, you lost. You lost me. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna go hide in the cloud. Check your left wing. There you go. <laughs> wow, Basically. I broke a decent sweat. Not even leaving the, not even leaving the chair. <laughs> Wait till tomorrow when we're in 110 degree, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. degree weather. All right. Sweet. So we went over and we did the virtual reality sims. Uh, they're nice, they're good, uh, and they're easily accessible and they're cheap. These are the real sims. So these sims are 360 degree view. Uh, they are the actual physical buttons that you same exact switches that you have in the airplane itself, uh, and really kind of the entire immersive experience. Great way to learn uh, how to fly instruments, how to uh, deal with emergencies. Right. All the emergencies are exactly the same. So I think we should go in there and check it out. Let's do it. Get out of the seat. So here it is. Whoa. How cool is this? Are you excited? Dude, <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I was just telling these guys, I've done so many cool things in my life, but this is the top of the list, right? This is amazing. Well, that, considering all the things you've done, that's pretty awesome. Well, so you have your left throttle, right throttle, right. okay? Lots of buttons on that. You don't really care about these buttons, okay. what the buttons do. I'm sure I'm not going to get it all right, but it's going to be amazing, no. so. Yeah. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's, right, do, let's this. do this. Right before you land, I want you to bring it back up to the horizon. Okay, so point down, point down, point down, point down. Okay, back up, back up, back up. Oh, all right, bounce. Okay, now back, back up. Okay, it's okay. You're not crashed. Not crashed. All right, you're on the runway now. Hit the now. Uh, smoothly apply the brakes. Little right rudder. Yeah, maybe all the right rudder. I think maybe, uh, oh, oh. oh man. <laughs> you can still add a seat if you need to. Uh, that's what I don't want. So cool. All right, so what do you think? Amazing. <laughs> the, ha having the actual physical uh, instrumentation, for right. me, was made it feel a lot more real. I don't know if you know this or not, but a lot of the buttons are shaped different. Right. And they're shaped different intentionally so that at night, by just feeling how the, 
feels, what the shape of it is. You know what it is. You know which one it, it does. does have you know the glance down. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, what a uh, incredible experience. I can't thank you enough. Dude. Awesome. Well, we'll get to go to the real thing tomorrow. Let's do it. Green, yeah. Green is good. Get out to the airspace, whatever airspace that's going to be today, based off of the weather for the takeoff. Expect to do a two by two second takeoff. Today is not the day to do a 12 or 14 second takeoff, right? Two by 10 second rolling interval takeoff today. Uh, get out to whatever airspace we can find with some clear air. Uh, hopefully, find some good defense in Vietnam and then come back uh, first to let RTB issue. That's amazing, Trevor. Just seeing that. That's awesome, dude. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. Reload really fight on. All right, here we go. Four and a half G's. <laughs> yeah, baby. All right, now we're going to go five to five and a half G's on this next one. How you doing? Doing good. Doing good. You see him off the nose? Yep. I see him. All right, here we go. Watch him. Walking away. Now we're gonna go get him. We're gonna come here, we're gonna take a Fox 2, which is an IR missile. There's a Fox 2. Alright, we're gonna get out of the way, my bullet. Come on, get out of the way. Here's Fox 2. Come on, get out of the way. There we go, now he's an idol. Reload. Wow. Alright, how you feeling? Feeling good. Those left G's are pretty intense. Oh yeah. It's way more than they think. Gear down, full stop runaway, 1 5 right. Gonna shift our aim point and let her touch down. Now we're gonna actually raise the nose. Really appreciation for everything that you do, not just uh, for me here, but just in general. I mean that the amount of training and, and the attention that you have to provide to get these pilots to the competencies that levels that they need to have is just is amazing. Yeah, there's an incredible amount of work from all levels, like we've talked about in the past, right? But the people who are fixing the jets to make sure that they're good to go, right? The people that are in the control tower making sure that we're safe and deconflicted. Uh, the people that are making sure the runway is safe. The people that are there that are uh, packing our parachutes and making sure our aircrew flight equipment is good. Uh, the doctors that are making sure that we're healthy when we need to be. And the instructors that are here and, and everybody else that's here helping support it so that we can create the best pilots in the world. Well, the day, an amazing day that I will never forget. Thank you for uh, pulling it together for us. Really awesome.